This is a clinic in the United States that runs regular vaccination sessions. We think keeping vaccines cold is easy here. After all, it's not like it's Africa where access to reliable electricity is challenging, infrastructure is poor, and equipment doesn't always work. It's not like parts of Asia where in order to reach the place where we do the vaccination, you have to cross a narrow footbridge or sometimes even take a canoe. But we'd be wrong. In a recent study published in 2012 by the Office of the Inspector General in the United States, 45 sites were selected at random from clinics and doctor's offices that participate in the National Vaccines for Children's program. Site visits were conducted, vaccine coordinators were interviewed, and vaccine management practices were observed. Finally, temperatures were recorded for two weeks in the units where the vaccines are held. Of the sites surveyed, 76%, that's three out of every four, had exposed the vaccines to temperatures outside of the recommended range for at least five cumulative hours. When the Office of the Inspector General compared the temperature records kept by the healthcare workers against the data from a logger placed inside the fridge where the vaccines were stored, no site, not one single one, had records that matched 100% of the time, indicating that the records that are kept are far from reliable. The United States isn't the only developed country to run into challenges with its cold chain. Studies have looked at the same issue in New Zealand, Australia, Spain, and Ireland, amongst others. In fact, in Canada, the problem of continually maintaining the cold chain without any accidental breaks led to the adoption of a new strategy. The provinces, who are responsible for paying for the vaccines, have started requiring vaccine manufacturers to submit data giving guidance on how stable their products are in case of accidental cold chain breaks. The regulators then review this data and reflect it on the label. For example, Prevnar 13, a pneumococcal vaccine, has a label in Canada that states, Prevnar 13 has been shown to be stable at temperatures of up to 40 degrees Celsius for four days. These data are not recommendations for shipping or storage, but may guide decisions for use in case of temporary temperature excursions. The reason Canada went to these lengths? The consequences of cold chain breaks are high, and especially so for countries like Canada and the U.S. that are paying up to $100 per dose of vaccine. Actually, in each of these countries, millions of dollars of wasted vaccine are being thrown out every year due to accidental exposure to heat or freezing temperatures. But vaccine wastage is actually being reduced in countries all across Europe, Asia, and Africa, thanks to a little sticker called the Vaccine Vial Monitor, that's attached to the vaccine at the point that it's produced. The vaccine vial monitor is a small sticker that changes color over time, giving the vaccinator instant information about whether the vaccine may have been exposed at any point during its journey to temperatures that could have negatively affected the vaccine's potency. Since VVMs were introduced in 1996, vaccinators that are using VVM-equipped vaccines have instant information about whether the vaccine may have been accidentally exposed to higher temperatures, things like an unknown power cut or an accidental exposure outside of the cold chain. Across Africa, Asia, and Europe, countries are dealing with their cold chain challenges and limitations and reducing vaccine wastage thanks to VVMs. Seeing as cold chain problems are everywhere, maybe it's time VVMs are everywhere too.